Okay, so we're on 10.1. Energy and work. <laughs> so, in the roller coaster lab, they talked about two kinds of uh, energy. Remember what those were in the packet with the roller coaster? Potential and kinetic. Exactly right. So, we talked about those today potential and kinetic energy. So, potential energy. How would you define potential energy? Um, it's when it's like up higher, so it has the potential to come down. Yeah, very good. That's right. So it has to do with height. So you can talk about gravitational potential energy where it has to do with height. And so that means that the higher up something is, the greater its potential to fall and accelerate. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say, like, the potential, like the, the energy stored in an object. Very good. Chemical potential. And that's stored where in the object? Exactly. Yeah, chemical bonds. So, so when you break those bonds, you get energy released. So that's why when you burn sugar, you, know, you eat food, and it breaks down the chemicals in the food. And then you get from that sugar and protein and fats. Your body can break down any of those chemicals. And when it does that, it breaks those bonds, and that bond releases the energy which your body can use. So that's how your body gets energy. It's by breaking the bonds in your food. You get energy from that. And so that's chemical potential energy. There's also electrical potential energy. It's in, the, in the battery stores energy as electricity. Um, and gasoline in your car, that's chemical potential energy in the fuel. And the car breaks those bonds in the gas to make energy for your car to move. So it's energy that's stored, that's available to do work, but it's not doing work at the moment. But it's available to do work in the future. So it's energy stored and available to do work. So one kind um, of energy that we can talk about as potential is gravitational, like Chris Becky pointed out, what has to do with the height of the object. So if you're dealing with gravitational potential energy, the higher up you are, the further away you are from a surface, the more it will accelerate to our surface when you let it go. So the equation for that would be mass times g times the height of the object. So if you increase the mass of the object, you increase uh, the gravitational force between the object and the mirror. Uh, is there a question about something on there? Yeah. Is that energy that is stored and available? Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. Yes. G is 9.8. So this says basically in G states constant here on Earth, right? Yes, you know, always 9.8. So what can change? Only mass and height would be the ones that can change. So if you add um, mass to an object or if you add height to an object, then you increase this energy, this potential that could be used to accelerate to your surface. So if you go up your stairs, you go from second story or first story to second story. What are you doing as you as you go up the stairs? Well, you're walking, right? That's kinetic energy that you're using. Your energy and motion is kinetic. So as you go up the stairs, you are exerting kinetic energy to do that. But if you're up here, compared to down here, you have used your energy of motion, your kinetic energy, to convert it into potential energy. As you go up here, Kinetic energy turns into potential energy. Since you have more potential energy on the second story than on the first story, you higher up off, off your surface. If you're on the second story of your, of your house and your floor were to cave in, you're going to fall to the ground. You have the potential to fall. So you have more energy up here than you do down here. Where did that energy come from? What was your motion? It was your movement of the stairs. 
that gave you that energy. And so you, you can convert between energy forms. You can convert between kinetic and potential. Like going up the stairs, mm -hmm. this kinetic energy that you're using to do that, converting it into potential as you go up the stairs. Yes. So can those things uh, to increase potential energy be just to increase the height? That's due with gravitational potential energy. So yes, yeah, so if you were to increase energy that's potential in the form of gravity, then you would increase the height or the mass. Uh, either of these, if you were to increase, you, you could do that. So that's just one kind of stored energy. Okay, other kinds of energy that's stored besides just gravitational energy. So like energy in the bonds between atoms, you can change that energy as well. So like when you go up the stairs, you're using kinetic energy to store out potential energy? It's converting, right? So you, as you go up the stairs, you're converting kinetic energy into potential. Okay. That's how, that's how that's happening. So you might exert going from say here to here, let's say you're exerting 200 joules of kinetic energy. That would be converted into 200 joules of potential energy. So you just, it's kind of like changing currency, right? You know, you can have dollars convert to euros. You can have hundred dollars in American money and give it to a bank to change it to euros. That's kind of what you're doing here. You're going between the currencies. It's the same value, just in a different um, energy form or a different monetary form in terms of money. So one way, or so that was um, gravitational. There's also chemical potential energy. You know, Santi uh, talked about that's in you know like the food that you eat, for example, uh, or gas in your car. Where you know when your car runs, you're breaking the bonds between the gas molecules to to create the combustion in your car, which creates the heat, which creates the smoke exhaust, which is what powers your car. Or in the food that you eat. When you digest the food, you're breaking apart the chemical bonds, which then is energy your body can use. So this could be examples of that would be something that's stored in the bonds between atoms. And you get it from breaking those bonds. It's released when the bonds are broken. You can think of it as you know, like you go pulling back a bow or you know a slingshot. When potential energy would be like pulling back that bow or pulling, pulling back the slingshot and having it ready to fire. And then the bonds being broken would be releasing that bow or releasing the slingshot for it to actually move forward. And so examples of that would be gasoline, um, food that we eat. There are other kinds too. Again, there's electric, you know, electrical potential energy in, you know, in batteries, for example, um, nuclear. But you know, these are the two main folks to talk about in physics. So we talked about energy. We haven't really defined it yet. So we can define energy as we go on. The best way to define energy would be the ability to produce a change in the world, to make motion, to cause something to you know, change form, to change temperature, to accelerate. It's the ability of an object to produce change in itself or in the world around it. So to put another way, it's just the ability to do work. So you could really say all of this is the ability to do work. So that's really how 
compels you to find work. For kinetic energy, you have the energy in motion. equation for that is one half mv squared. So that equation tells you that kinetic energy relies on only two things, the mass and the velocity. So it depends upon mass and velocity. So you can increase kinetic energy by doing either of those things, by increasing the velocity or the mass of an object. Now, based on what this definition of energy says, the ability to do work, what we can say is the change in energy would equal the work you can do. So we could put this into an equation form where we could say that work is equal to the change in kinetic energy. So we can just say W equals the change in kinetic energy. Like that. So we can also write this as W equals K final minus K initial. We can also write that as one half M final squared minus one half M V initial squared. Those are all the same form of the equation. Do you have this bottom part down in here? So this equation right here is the theorem. It's called the work energy theorem. says that when you do work on an object, the result is a change in kinetic energy. Oops, sorry. So equals delta Ke, the change in kinetic energy. Okay. Did we go through the four energy units? Like, you know, how to, because I don't think we did, did we? We didn't define energy units. Um, we, had, we defined force units, right? We talked about that a lot. So what's the energy unit? Um, well, sorry, what's the force unit? Mm -hmm. Newtons. And we talked about the mass unit for kilograms. But the work um, would be equal to joules. We had a chemistry we talked about this, didn't we? Oh, we did. I guess not. Okay. So James Prescott Joule was, uh, I think in the 1800s, he developed this relationship between work and energy. And he developed equations to measure energy. And Joule, J-O-U-L-E, is the unit for energy. It's equivalent to a Newton times a meter. So a Joule, just capital J, equals Newton times meter. What does that say? Well, work, that's what a joule is, equals force times distance when you're traveling. So we can use that equation to get work equals, equals force times distance. Uh, we could also write it out, we don't normally do this, but we could change um, newtons into its units for kilograms times meters of the second squared. And we write it that way. So I'll write this over here. Okay. 
that we could rewrite kilograms times meters over second squared for newtons, and that's times the meter. We can square the meters, and so we get joules equals kilograms times meter squared over second squared. So a joule can be written like this. It can be written like this as far as units go, but it's probably best to just keep it as joules and, and just don't have it as anything besides just a capital J for joules. In your book on page 261, let's look at example number one. Well, you can apply um, this theorem on how to use that. Okay, um, 261. Okay, so let's look at um, 261, example number one. We have 105 gram hockey puck going across the ice. A fluid exerts a force of 4.5 newtons over a 0.15 meter distance. How much work does the player do on the puck? What is the change in the puck's energy? So they're asking about two different things here. That's about the work that's done on the puck and the change of energy. But those equal each other. So they ask about the work that's being done. That work that is being done is equal to the energy change. And so if we find out either of those things, they equal each other. Okay, so I showed you before on the equation work equals force times distance. We could use that one, or we can say work is equal to um, change in kinetic energy. So either of those ones could be used, depends upon what you need to do in the problem. And work is equal to energy. So what do we know so far? We know how far the puck traveled, right? 0.150 meters. Um, we know the force is around the puck. We know its mass. And that's it. So what can we do? We can multiply the force times the mass. It's actually, I'm sorry, the force times the distance traveled. And that would give you the energy that the puck is being used to travel across the ice. So work equals force times distance can be used to find the work that's being transferred, which equals the energy the puck has. So we can just take, make sure it's in newtons and meters, which it already is, and just do 4.5 newtons times 0.15 meters. And that will give you the work that the puck does, or that is done on the puck. So what is the force that's being done on the puck? 4.5. 4.5. And then how far is it travel? Okay. Okay. So multiply those two. What does that give you? Okay. It's the units would be noon times meters, but you could also just change it in joules. And so we could say 0.675 joules or 0.675 newtons times meters. Either those are valid units, either one would be fine. They usually prefer joules as your unit, but either one, you could break down your answer. And they're asking for this part, what is it change in the puck's energy? Well, again, work that's done on the puck equals the change in energy. So if we found the work that's done, which is 0.675 joules, um, that also will equal the change in energy. So it's also 0.675 joules with a change in energy of the puck. Does that make sense? Okay. So on page 261, um, we're on one through three for right now. Um, this one is going on. One through three. On 261. Now do you have your test, so it has to be done in a second. Yes. Uh, 
I don't have loose leaf, I'm sorry. I know.